Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, and welcome back to Celebrating Act 2, where Art Kirsch and I are with our favorite love and relationship coach, Michelle Fabrega. Michelle, great to have you with us. Thank you. Good to be Hi, here. Michelle. Art, I understand from Michelle that we're going to be talking about... What are we talking about? <laughs> listening. You don't even listen. See? You weren't paying attention. We're talking about listening, how important it is to be a good wait, listener. Wait, wait a minute, John. Does this mean that I have to mute your mic? <laughs> no. You have to listen to me. <laughs> oh, I, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, yeah, Michelle, I'll bet you really, do. Michelle, will you help dig us out of this hole that we are putting ourselves into <laughs> yeah, so that we don't yeah. have to listen to one another again for a while? Right. I'm. Yeah, I mean, you know, listening, right. Everybody knows, right? Listening is a very powerful, extremely powerful communication tool. And, you know, we all know that. But um, I think that it deserves a deeper dive because I want to talk about a specific kind of listening. Um, so first of all, it, you know, obviously it's more than just not talking, right? <laughs> being a, and a, being a good listener is especially important when our partner is upset. And um, I, I want I have a quote here for us that by Thich Nhat Hanh, who's a you know Zen master and global spiritual leader. Deep listening is the kind of listening that can help relieve the suffering of another person. You can call it compassionate listening. You listen with only one purpose, to help him or her empty his heart. Well, that's good. Deep, now, so you're calling it deep listening. I, I remember uh, when our kids were small, um, we learned active listening. Active listening was giving feedback, I, if I recall correctly. It, it What's different between or maybe they're not, maybe it's just a different term, deep listening and active listening. Yeah, yeah. So there's some overlap, obviously, but um, I'm, when I'm when someone is upset, I mean, that's kind of what I want to focus on today. When someone's upset, we really want to listen in a particular way to allow them to empty out their emotions, okay? So active listening is sometimes, you know, you're paraphrasing what they're, mean, what they're saying, um, and, and that can be helpful too, so that kind of to understand, but we're not trying to give feedback. We're not trying to give advice because basically when we feel our emotions, we heal. I mean, that's how humans heal is by feeling. And many of us were, you know, we're not taught that feelings are natural and healthy. And so, um, you know, we are uncomfortable with our own feelings sometimes. Sometimes we don't even know what we feel. We can't sure. even... Like, I don't even know, you know, um, I work with people around this that sometimes it's just tuning in is really difficult and they just feel like a kind of almost like a deadness in their body. And so it, there's a process of learning to tune in and sort of um, like kind of thaw what this I can't feel. It's dangerous to feel. People will make fun of me. They'll shame me. So it's sort of like when someone is upset, it's it's good to give them this, you know, space to empty out and they're really bringing something vulnerable right when they're feeling emotions so it's good to you know kind of ex like remind yourself there's just something precious that's arriving it's like a gift that they're willing to share with you so you're uh, michelle i'd like to explore this a little bit further because um uh, uh, although i know that our subject matter uh, uh, here the title is is listening uh, uh, as uh, I, th I, th I think you know that uh, before I got into the entertainment world, I'd spent about 30 years as a, uh, I was a consultant on uh, businesses for a while, but the vast majority of it was uh, sales and sales management. And the most successful uh, uh, trait that a good salesperson can have is not to listen, but to hear. Because mm. they could just hear words being coming out and saying this, that, and, and then maybe give you an opening to a word. But it, the, the difference to me was the hearing was to understand what um, uh, somebody needed, what they were really saying, not just the words that were coming out. And therefore, you could say, hey, my, yes, my product will solve this for you, or 
my product won't solve this for you, but maybe something else will. But if I just listen to them without understanding what their real needs were, then more likely than not, I was never going to be able to satisfy them. That makes so sense? hearing hearing versus listening, Michelle, are we just, is that just semantics? Are you saying? Um, well, it's interesting for my, yeah, I mean, it kind of is, but in my sense, uh, or my sense, uh, you know, no pun intended, I think of hearing is actually sound coming in, <laughs> whereas listening is a more, um, and, and, you know, depending on what you're calling it. Or maybe I shouldn't listening, use the word listening. understanding, understanding what they're saying as opposed yes. to just hearing it. Yeah. I, it sounds yes. to me like you're both saying the same thing and using opposite, not opposite, <laughs> different terms. Right. But you're both saying the same thing. Is is the, I, I remember somebody using the phrase, oh, I hear you. I hear you. Meaning, I understand you. Right, right. And that's what you're yeah. both talking about, yeah. using different terms. So, Let's stick with deep listening for this conversation because Art, you confuse me. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> well, I'm appreciating your listening, John, because you're really helping us tease out like the different nuances. So thank you well, for I'm, that. Well, I'm deep listening is what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, are there are there techniques for because it's pretty easy to tune out somebody? Quite frankly, yeah. are there techniques for deep listening? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, like I said, in this situation, I'm talking about with a loved one. So hopefully we're listening with our whole body, right? We're tuning in, we're listening, we're not, you know, all of our senses are, you know, obviously we're, we're observing them. Um, we're, you know, making eye contact with them, we're attuning to them, you know, trying to assess, wow, how are they feeling? And what is, what are they not saying here? And how can I just hold the space for them to share their experience? So it's not listening to the thoughts that are going in our head. Oh, they need to do this, or they ought to, they shouldn't have done that. It's like, oh, that's not, how can they be that angry about this? No, you know, I'm listening to what's going on in here. We're listening and just being there with the other person. We're not preparing for how we're going to respond. We're just being with them. And um, it's such a gift to be in this sort of like open state and with curiosity and love, really. In you, you know, I had um, only a few times in my life I have experienced that, mm. where I wasn't processing what they were saying. I was acknowledging, internally, I was acknowledging what they were feeling. I, I, it was empathy. I'm listening to this person, and I'm, I, I'm empathizing with them. And that... Yeah. That eventually led me to uh, to my uh, reaction, which was a better reaction because it was about them, not about me. Uh, and it, you're right; it's a rare, it's a gift. It's a gift to be able to empathize that way and take yourself out of it as you're listening to somebody spew out their emotions. And it, sometimes the emotions are not nice. You know, sometimes it's hate as opposed to. Uh, wallowing and uh, and pity or something. So, but mm. whatever the emotions are that they're expressing, it's important to really understand them, where they're coming from. John, that is so beautiful. I mean, I love the way you said that. It really is, um, like you said, just being there with them. And the, the cool thing about it, when you really are able to be present with them is you don't have to do anything. Like you don't have to solve it. You don't have to help them feel better. It's really not your job. If you're trying to feel, help them feel better, then you're kind of caretaking and you're trying to stop, stop feeling so much. I can't deal with it. Like we're letting, we're welcoming it. And it's just, it's, it's such, it gives them that freedom to just really empty out. And then you're with them in that. And then at the, once things kind of, settle which they always do when we have strong emotions things settle and then something like you said then you can respond or they might even have you know what i realize i want to do this like they have their own answers often just by us being present with them and you know this is certainly something i do with clients obviously is that i'm there to support them and wow this is really intense what happened with you and your relationship 
in that situation. And, that, and then they have their own answers. And it's so much more meaningful to help them get to that place than for someone to come in to try to like, oh, well, why did you do that? Or even, um, I get so excited about this, but even when you're not, um, like, let's say your partner's upset with you. <laughs> That's trickier, right? Yeah. But to not worry about yet what you did or said or oops or whatever, just help feel their experience. I mean, yeah. that can be a beautiful, you know, relationship builder, experience, building experience for the two of you. Yeah, good point. Uh, I, I have an, a, a little aside for this, and that is that... Um, I think you can tell me if if I'm on track here. I think it's a, a male female thing to a certain degree. Um, I read a I don't know where I heard it, but it was kind of like um a, a, a woman was spewing her guts out, you know to the to her partner. Um, she was you know emoting, and he, um, he came back with an aunt, with a suggestion. Uh, well, why don't you do this? Da, 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 da. And she yelled at me. She said, I don't want you to give me advice. I want. I just want you to listen. In other words, shut up and listen to me. <laughs> and, and that's kind of what we're talking about, is, is if we are, uh, if we're spilling our guts to somebody we care about, good or bad, whatever the, the issue is, uh, we want to be heard. We want to be acknowledged. And and having having somebody tell you what to do or or give you advice or whatever isn't necessarily the kind of listening we want when we're mm -hmm. when we're giving our emotion, when we're Yeah, I, I think uh, John uh, on this bit of a side um, I, I recognize that sometimes people just want to have, rather than talk to a wall, they want to talk to somebody and they're not looking for response. They're just looking right. for them to listen. They don't yeah. want, they don't want a response. Uh, they just want somebody that's human that they, uh, yeah. let's say respect or care about or close to just and trust. To listen and to maybe give them a hug and then let it, let it be. Right. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I see that a lot. Yeah. Was, and and Michelle, Michelle it was, it, it's also interesting that you said it, you, if you're the listener, you don't have to do anything. Hmm. That's a, an important technique, I think. Yeah. I mean, it takes you off the hook from the pressure. Like, oh, God, they're so upset. I got to fix this. I got, I have to explain why I was late because da, 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 they're upset at me. Sure. Just that. I mean, there's time for things later. But when yeah. someone is an upset, it's not the time for that. You don't, yeah, it, it's really, it's so much easier, right? Yeah. Well, I could fake that. that by the way, by not the way so, so, so Michelle, are you suggesting that perhaps the best technique to be a great listener is to be in that final scene of Gone with the Wind and your Rhett Rettler or whatever his name was, Clark Gable, and rather than say, quite frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Just do the same role, but don't say that words. Don't say don't that say words. Don't say the words. Right. I just, no, you I may think I, it, but you I just listen to it and, and, and then and, and walk away. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't agree. Okay. Um, you know, yeah, you the really walk away be, part ruins it. Oh, yeah. You want to really be in your own humanity with them, right? really present and caring and, but you don't have to do anything. You're just there to help them relieve their suffering. Yeah, and give yeah. them a hug. Maybe just give them a hug. I, I've heard what you had to say, I know you're in pain. And without saying anything, just give them a hug and hope they feel better. Well, even that, I actually would caution that. I would wait mm. to see either ask first, like they might just be in a state where they don't want to hug. They don't want to, because sometimes when we hug someone, it's like, oh, they're there and you pat their back. It's mm -hmm. like, stop trying to make me yeah. feel, I'm, let me have my feelings here. Let me, don't take care of me. Don't take, so you, you got to be careful with that one. It's best yeah. to just, just be and take the cue from them what they need next. You could ask them, is there something I can help you with? Or 
is, would you like some support around that? Or how can I, how can I, what would you like next or something, yeah, I, you know, just. I like the, uh, I like the part where you said you don't have to do anything. <laughs> that's, that's No, me. it's good, right? Yeah, and you've already helped me show. because now I know that a hug is not automatic. Okay. And I probably should ditch the, quite frankly, my dear. I don't give a damn. <laughs> Definitely did that. that. Yeah. The best advice ever. Cause yeah. I'm and don't walk out that. the door after the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, a deep listening. I love the term. This is a new one. I like it. I think it's important that uh, that you shared this with us. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.